Hello, oh, we're back again with some Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I feel absolutely terrible today. Uh, we'll, we'll see. Um, see how far we get. I might, I might end up not doing this today. Well, then I might get a new location. Um, we were at the refugee camp, but I forgot... that is and what I'm doing. Um, it says this way. Oh yeah, it was under the bridge. Um, uh, under the bridge, under the bridge. Why don't I get under the bridge? Did you hear another sailor strand on the beach? What an idiot. Work of a siren. So, so, I guess so. Okay, whatever. I, I don't think that's really to do what we're doing here. Um, God, I know there was stairs that led down. Um, this be the bridge. Where are those stairs? Oh, it is through here. Okay, yeah, this looks familiar. Alright, we were in the midst of interrogating people, if I recall. Um, Johnson, uh, asking around the, oh, asking around the camp. What's this? Ah. A single malpal butt. There's a lot of cigarette butts, though. Roadman's cigarettes. A brand highly regarded by law enforcement officers. So there wasn't any sophisticated infiltration plan. The good old police just let the man into the camp. Now we have everything we need to get the full picture of what happened at the camp. Okay. Um, I need a refresher first of all. Um, I remember talking to this guy. There's our body. He was stabbed with a... Dirk. Uh, a thin straight-edged blade, the scabbard from which is here, with a thousand pounds, and some of those Malpal cigarettes. Um, the police talked about there being some sort of scheme. They let him into the camp. There was blood here, and a trail that lets beads back. Um, he stumbled and fell into the canal. There's barefoot marks and dragging this way. Okay. Let's get John over here and see what we can do. Okay. People. We're gonna start over. We're gonna start. We're gonna start over here. Lady, that looks like our sailor. What's our alternatives? Uh, yeah, there's drag marks. It was not amicable. There was a scuffle. So she's scuffling. People will come to her aid. What's the difference? Oh, in one she was coming willingly. Yep. People come to her aid. He draws the knife. Is that indeed our man? Yeah, it's the guy. He's the guy who's injured. Um. Yeah, her beads. Yeah, she did not come willingly. She did not. So. There's a scuffle here. I see her footprints there, so... Oh, he's also barefoot. 
Um, yeah, he wasn't running away because we have some footprints that are pointing in the uh, opposite direction. So there must have been a stand and fight kind of situation and he ended up getting stabbed or... Uh, oh, he stabbed himself. Um, well, they did mention last time that the stab wound was from down low going upwards, which would imply that the assailant was actually somebody who was significantly smaller than him. Or, yeah, something like this, where he did it to himself. Uh, it definitely doesn't jive with that, because that's up and above, so it must be this. Um, except here he's losing his knife, which... He did not do, so that must be more like what we were talking about. Why there are footprints in both directions, I can't tell. And then he stabs himself and falls into the water. Um, I think he just fell. There's the, there's the scuff mark right there and the blood drops. That seems to make sense to me. Is that everything? So, we have a thug who came to take a refugee woman with him. She resisted, but he dragged her by force. One of the refugees stood in his way, armed with a stick, yet he could do nothing against a cutthroat with a blade. The man didn't anticipate that the other refugees would intervene and stand against him. In the confusion, the woman managed to break free. The thug took fright and fled. He was stopped by the falling crates. He stumbled and fell, piercing his chest with his own blade. However, the wound didn't cause instant death. He managed to stand, but still bleeding, he lost his balance on the bridge and fell. Before all of this, the man had freely entered the camp through the main entrance. The police admitted him after they had a short smoke together. You live by the sword, you die by the sword. In our man's case, it's the same sword. Okay, but where is she now? Uh, learn more about this matter by asking around the camp. Oh, okay, I should probably ask around before we lose uh, our chance. So how do we... Back off. Okay. There's... Really, no one to talk No one to. deserves to end up in a place like this. Could you help me? Oh, I don't know about that. Ask one of the others. I can't talk to him. He's the only refugee here. May I ask you something? Unfortunately, my casebook is empty on this. Time to check your who, what and what, Sherry. Who are you asking about what and dressed as what? Um. Not sure who else to talk to about this. Um, if I go back out, perhaps. Can you satisfy my curiosity? No, I don't know anything about that. I'm not sure who we're supposed to talk to about this. There's not really anybody around. Beasts. May I ask you something? I'm sorry, officer, but I don't know. Oh, I am bored. Shut up, Call John. me when you find the answer. You're fucking imaginary. If you don't like it, just recede into the ether. All right, I don't know who we're supposed to talk to about this. Um. Oh, find palace. The thug didn't hurt the girl. I tried to drag the girl away. Okay. Cool dust, cool footprints. Uh huh. 
He's not merely a thief, but also a kidnapper, a henchman who takes on various roles. I don't think he's a henchman. I don't think he's a henchman. I don't know who to... Mr. Harlow, your refugees didn't murder anyone. What? Pray tell me what you've learned. All right, listen carefully. This might solve one problem for you, but will create a few more. Oh, well, that's a great start. The man came to the camp intending to kidnap one of your refugees, a woman. What he didn't expect was that the refugees would stand up to protect the woman. A brawl had broken out. In the chaos of it, the man stumbled over those crates and fell on his own blade. How do you know he fell on his own blade? The wound in his chest was inflicted from an unusual angle. It was not an offensive stab, shall we say. The refugees didn't touch him. And judging by the blood at the scene, the intruder managed to raise himself but was unable to walk very far. He ultimately fell into the canal. But how did he sneak into the camp? Why didn't the police see him? And this is where your new problems emerge, Mr. Harlow. What do you mean? You're not a dull-witted man. You know what I mean. There is no feasible way to get into the camp without the police guards knowing of it. <sighs> the pile of mess I had to sort out has just become bigger. But somehow that doesn't surprise me. Anyway, I thank you for your help, Mr. Holmes. I'll take it from here. Meanwhile, I'll make sure the police aren't detaining the refugees any longer. You can go back in and look for your witness. Do you think one small clock can okay, make any difference in this place? Who knows, John? Just one ill-fitting cog could make the whole machine crumble. So now we got something that I shouldn't just as a cop. Okay. All right. Um, who should I be? Um, probably nice shabby clothes. <laughs> they really don't like that scarf. Oh. Oh, putting that on changed all of my clothes. Okay. I don't like the eye patch. I seem to appreciate the stubble. Okay. And I like the fake bruises. Okay. Thanks for me. Is this familiar to you? They often take us from the camps to work. Most don't mind, though. It's the only way we get a glimpse of freedom. Some shady people regularly visit the camp and take refugees away with them to perform various work. The work is usually hard, but the refugees receive money and food. The girl was abused after she was supposedly taken to such work. Since then, the refugees decided not to allow their women to be taken. Was that depravity in the photograph, one of the workplaces the refugees are taken to? And all the while, the police look the other way. Ugh, typical. Right. South African refugee, affable, unconcerned. Friendly. What do you know about these workplaces? Are you able to help me? Sorry. We don't see much here. Or is there nothing else to find out? There's... Still the speech bubble. May I ask for your assistance? Sorry. We don't see much here. 
Everyone's looking at us, Sherry. Oh, shut up. You sure you know what you're doing? So this is part of the reason why they were so... Um, ...defensive of the girl being taken. You're the one who tended to our man's wounds. I thank you greatly. The police didn't allow us to help him. The police will leave you alone now. I've proven to them that the man who came into the camp died due to his own foolishness. Thank you for standing up for us. But nobody would help us without a reason. You're here because you want something. Yes, I do. I need to speak with the girl drawn here. Mm. The dead man came for her too. He wanted to take the girl away. But we won't allow her to be hot again. What do you want from Nela? Nela. She was hurt some time ago. I'm here to find the people who did this and bring them to justice. And to find them, I need Nayla's help. Will you let me speak to her? Justice. There's no justice on this land. But you helped us, so maybe your words are not empty. You can speak to Nayla, if she wants it. But I will be watching you. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Nayla? <laughs> My name is Sherlock. I know someone hurt you. I am here to help. I'm trying to find the people involved and bring them to justice, please. There is a photograph, and I'm sorry, it is terrible, but I simply must ask. Where did this happen? What can you tell me about these people? Christ, Sherlock. Nayla, I'm... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm not very good at this. You come here for me, but you are rude and cruel and condescending. A cross. The man had this cross. Now go away. Leave us be. I do not need another white man's help. Oh, glad that wasn't me. Not my best work, John. By a long shot. Nayla doesn't want us meddling. I'm starting to wonder what this all achieves. But she helped you anyway. Now we know that maniac's face and the cross he wore, we can still catch him. She not, might, may not want to deal with this, and that's understandable, but if these people are still out there, then they could hurt somebody else. So. Okay. Nayla's the one with the defiler and a peculiar cross. Badges such as these are usually awarded to high-ranking officials. The defiler from the photograph may be one. Um, yes, indeed. Tattoo. I wish they had included a drawing of the tattoo. I recall it was... A solid bar with a dot or two above it. So to do some research here for this one. These two. I don't know who else to speak to about this. At least some of your kind have a hat. Thank you again. I to talk to her. Yes. Excuse me, just one question. Sorry, we don't see much here. Can I ask you a question? Sorry, we don't see much here. Oh, I am bored. Call me when this you find me. This is for the your answer. question. Could you help me? Sorry, we don't see much here. Okay. Apparently I've learned all I can about this from talking to people. There's nobody back here. Okay, I guess we're going to do some research on that cross. You still here? 
wonder what this is about. I'll just look around and do my paperwork. You won't even notice me. I wish. I owe you a lot, Mr. Holmes. Okay, um... Who do we... Talk to about research for this? Um, probably City Hall. Uh, which is here. But I cannot fast travel right now for one reason or another. I have to pass this magic barrier. Nope. Even that magic barrier will not do. Guy mysteriously all on his lonesome over here. It's not suspicious. City Hall. I can remember which way to go. Keep pressing E to interact. Alright, I can't remember which way the archive is. Alright, what do we know about this? Um... High-ranking officials, um, or actually, not many of those visit Cordona. It might be the newspaper. Um, officials, British. He's right on the border between Scaladio and Silverton. Let's try Scaladio. There we go. Thomas Norton, born 1840 in London, graduated from the University of Oxford in 1864. 1869, started working for the Home Office as a secretary. 1875, took a position as a military commissioner in India. Honored by the Queen herself with the Order of the Bath in 1877. 1878, was appointed as the British envoy in Cordona with his own cabinet in the City Hall. Okay. I should probably change. What's the difference between the artist bristles and the... It's a slight... My slight mustache, that's the difference. as I probably should. There's one cabinet here in City Hall, huh? I wonder if I talk to this lady if she knows more. I'm curious, how did Mycroft recruit you? I doubt you're a field agent. I imagine you work with intelligence. That's correct. Your brother noticed me when I tracked down a spy at the archives. That's how our cooperation began. And you? Did Mycroft force you into this? Not at all. We simply have a mutual interest in someone. Or something. Of course. A fruitful and willing collaboration, I'm sure. Well, I'm his younger brother. I have to accept the consequences of being a close relative of an official figure. I suppose, in a way, we are colleagues, Mr. Holmes. In the remotest way possible, Miss Oni. Okay, um... Sorry, I had to... Check to make sure I wasn't missing a meeting. Okay, that wasn't particularly helpful. It said City Hall, though. So, uh, there's a crowd over here, is this room supposed to be? Do you know anything about this? Apologies, sir, but I've never heard of it. The chief of the archives, archives, is there? Chief archivist, 
Oh, Thomas Norton. That's him. Hmm. That's our guy. Not as many exotic collections as I expected to see. If you're here on matters of signing up for military service, come back tomorrow. Our department needs to straighten out some business. <laughs> you shall hear no time to shave, huh? on his skin like that drop scrape eh, I don't think so Not unless his skin is made out of fucking paper seems more viscous than wine <laughs> clothes stays at work late uh, it does look like he's It does look like he's quite a uh, busy guy, huh? Not sleeping, not shaving, clothes rumpled, hasn't even had a chance to wash the wine off of him. I know when I'm hard at work, I'm always drinking wine. It doesn't look like wine, though. It just says wine, question mark. Um, yes, part of it never takes it off. That makes sense. Wrinkled clothes, red eyes means that you didn't return home last night and said this is gravity and alcohol. Or he's in remorse. Um, clothes and wrinkle barely bothers to shave. His red eyes indicate that he may suffer from insomnia. Those are the nightmare. Attempting to rid himself of his terrible memories of past mistakes. Mm. Um, no. Okay, here's my thought process on this. I like how every once in a while his animation loop resets and instead of having a seamless loop they just time jump him back um here's my thought process on this um the actual clues themselves that were actually being given here not sleeping not shaving never removing the metal not changing his clothes and a, a stain on the back of his hand um these themselves do not indicate whether he is remorseful or a party goer them, himself, either one way or another, in my opinion. Um, but if we know to take what else we know about him, um, this is a man who has done many bad things, and we have no evidence that he is remorseful at all. And if you consider the situation that he found himself in in that photograph, that was not exactly a heat of the moment crime of passion that was a premeditated literally planned including costumes and all, everything that's, that's not the act of somebody who would later be remorseful about it and he seems that he would he wasn't pushed into it in any reason so i'm gonna go with party goer um yeah why are you staring at me like i'm a madame to swords figure didn't you hear what I just said? On my way here, I was wondering whether you might regret what you did. I tried my best to retain at least a shred of faith in humanity. I had hoped that you would hear her scream, see her face in your dreams, or at least once ask yourself how Nayla might feel. Who? Neither of my hopes were fulfilled. Why are you here? Um, oh, I can punch him in the face. <laughs> um... I don't know if that's necessarily going to be productive. It sounds hilarious, though. 
Um, I'm just going to show him the photograph. Do you recognize this man? Hmm. We definitely look alike. But you have the wrong person. Really? Then you won't mind if I pass this along to the newspaper? All right. All right. Is this about money, as you said in the letter? No, he's being what kind now. of sum are we talking about? I've never written a single word to you. Bribery, not my style. So, that letter, it wasn't from you? Well, it appears that more and more people in the city are finding out about your despicable hobby, doesn't it? You're in the clutches of justice, and very soon they will squeeze you. It's in your best interest to cooperate. Fine. I suppose now we have a nice long talk. Do you drink, Mr...? Sherlock Holmes. And I do not. Shame. All the best discussions are accompanied by a glass of whiskey. But out of respect for you, I won't drink either. Respect. Don't bother respecting me. I have none for it's you. It's an unusual word in your mouth, Mr... Where are my manners? My name is Thomas Norton, a British envoy in Cordona on a military mission. So, where do we start? Hmm. Let's start uh, with who do you think might be blackmailing? You mentioned me? blackmail. Tell me about it. All right. A couple of days ago, I received an anonymous letter. It said that in the art gallery at Caravansary, there exists a painting that incriminates me. The blackmailer made it clear that if there is a painting, then a photograph exists too. And I should be wary of what it might do to my reputation. What does the blackmailer want from you? Money, of course. What else do such people want? Needless to say, I don't remember anyone taking photographs at the party. Up until the last moment, I hoped he was bluffing. But he wasn't, as you've just proven to me. Show me the letter. I burnt it as soon as I read it. I've left enough evidence. There's no need for any more. Okay. Um... Did you know? Uh, let's do these two afterwards. I guess let's go with So, the let's party. return to the beginning. What happened at the party? I vaguely remember that night. As usual at such parties, you meet people, you talk with them, they invite you to spend some time alone with them. What can I say? I got myself mixed up with the wrong company, and somebody must have mixed some psychoactive substance in my drink. After that, it's all blurry. Right. I completely lost my... Sanity. I made a terrible mistake which I regret deeply. You don't say? Do refugee girls often appear on the menu at those types of parties? It's rather rare. So you didn't attend the party to engage in an exotic experience involving a vulnerable woman unable to accuse you of assault? I would never have planned such a terrible thing. What happened was just bad circumstance. Right. Sure it was. Boniface Mercurio, does the name mean anything to you? He's an artist, right? The one responsible for the painting that compromises you. I found him dead in his room. Oh, that is bad. Wait, you don't think that I have anything to do with this? You had motive to kill him. Maybe I did, but listen. I know how this looks, but murder? That's on another level. I had thoughts that this Mercutio... Mercurio? Well, him, yes. I thought he could have been the blackmailer. But I was too afraid to make any hasty decisions. There were plenty of ways to fail by making a move, so I chose to wait. To see what he would do next. You have to believe me. Don't. I don't believe people, I believe evidence. Then look at the evidence. The painting that depicted you in the image of the devil was stolen by a mercenary. Did you have anything to do with it? I might be a rotten person, sir, but hiring criminals for illicit purposes is not in my daily schedule. And buying the painting in an attempt to hide the crime, is that on your daily schedule? What would you do in my situation? I would never put myself in such a situation. You're young. I could never have imagined myself in my current position. Yet, here I am in front of you. We all make mistakes, Mr. Holmes. And I'm no exception. That's not Mr. Holmes, an oopsie. This I is built not my mistake. entire career on hard work and uncompromising dedication to the Crown. I made a mistake. But I'm not a villain from some cheap adventure fiction. No, By you're putting worse. me behind bars, you will benefit precisely you. no one. Rotting in prison is the least you deserve, but I have a better idea. You will make amends and help the ones you hurt. 
I have to choose either the, all the refugees or her. Um, honestly, helping her is the least that he could do. Helping the refugees in his position seems like a, a much better use of his authority here. It also seems like it gives him enough room to slip the noose, though. Okay. Use your connections to help patriate the refugees. Find them decent homes. Give them jobs. There must be a meaning to your position and my... decision. Yes. All right. I can do that. So, will you give me the photograph now? That's not all. Oh, okay. Yes, do both. Nayla deserves the very utmost of what you can do. Help the girl? I can't risk the press paying extra attention to her. I will do anything except that. I need to think this all through. Don't do anything foolish in the meantime. I mean... What makes you think you can decide what's best for these people? Exactly. Such is the arrogance of British imperialism. I take your point. Yeah, exactly. But my, my, my personal opinion is that neither of those were optimal choices. Because um, it still leaves a... Uh, I mean, he's not accepting any responsibility. He's classified this as a mistake. It leaves a person who's corrupt in a position to corrupt the system. So, not good. Um, but that's okay. We have our choices. There's only so much we can do, so. Um... Yeah, exactly. And once there's no proof... Once there's no proof, then there's no reason to follow through. <sighs> These are our conclusions. The envoy can neither be trusted nor forgiven for what he did, humiliation and ostracization. From an outraged Gordona are the least he deserves. Give the photograph to Vogel so you can make everything public. Thomas Norton is a debaucher who committed a terrible act. Even though he deserves to be brought to justice, I cannot overlook the opportunity to do greater good. Give the envoy the photograph in exchange for the refugees' legalization. This is a tough position to be in um, because on the one hand, this seems like it is, from a utilitarian perspective, the greatest good. But considering the fact that he has absolutely no reason to follow through if he were to receive the photograph and indeed has every incentive to use his foreign contacts back in Britain to be moved to a different position as soon as possible. This has the greatest utility, but the least amount of pragmatism. Whereas this has the least amount of pragmatism <laughs> because essentially what it said, I mean, but this is the, this is from from I guess a Kantian perspective the um, the 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 most just outcome. But I don't think I'm ready to do that yet because as I recall, wasn't there? Because we still have these three things here. And there was another thing. This. It's given me the ability to end the investigation, and yet there's more evidence here. There's these three things. What is what is the speech bubble? That's not that's not an interview. That's the that's the three the three people icon. This is the bros with john icon what is this i can't remember it's not an archive and if indeed the envoy was drugged that's another thread that we haven't pulled on here Not that it absolves him of the crime, but I mean, if there are people out there having these parties, 
with drugs. I mean, we're not actually addressing the human trafficking aspect of this. The envoy is guilty as hell, but if there's parties out there... With, uh, I don't like the way this is ending. I don't think we're done. But I also don't know what this icon means, and I don't have... Is it in the... Help? Combat investigation. How to play... Pin chemical analysis. Talk to the case participant. Talk to the case participant. Okay. So this is the envoy. How are we supposed to talk to the dead guy? Is this back at the refugee camp with the guy and it's like present evidence? Is that what this is supposed to be? Let's try that. Don't go anywhere. Don't leave town either. That's what this is. You still here? Yes. All right. Um, first of all, do you know anything about the tattoo? The intruder has a most peculiar tattoo on his neck, two lines and a point. Do you know anything about it? You really want to know, kid? Why? You want to play a policeman or something? I'm sure you have it in your records, so it won't hurt if I have it in mine. In my records, it's just a tattoo, as it should be in yours. Ah, to hell with you. Suit yourself as to what you're going to do with it. Off the record, though, such tattoos are often connected to a man named Mr. Niccolo Bernadotti. Bernadotti, you say? A respectable businessman in Scaladio. Mm -hmm. His company imports goods and wines and smuggles everything that can be smuggled between the colonies and the mainland. Including the His people. people can be identified by an obscure tattoo. Just like the one over there our friend has. But these are all merely rumors, you see. If Mr. Bernadotti was a criminal, he'd be in prison now. Or hanged, right? All right, what about the police? Um, what about this, the thing? The guards at the sewers were speaking about taking refugees out of the camp. Do you know anything about this, Inspector? Less than you do, obviously. And this doesn't bother you as an officer of the law? I can neither punish them nor put them on the right track, if that's what you're asking. Maybe your friends at City Hall could do something about it, but I The police in Cordona that. seem to, to be, be honest, all kinds of corrupt. I'm sick this and tired like of third... being frowned on for my uniform. If those fine gentlemen you've eavesdropped on are in some shady business, that's on their heads. So there's a smuggling ring in the camp. This wasn't the first time that someone freely entered the camp to take a refugee out. At least it was certainly his last time. My gut tells me that we'll learn more about this ring when we find out where the thug came from. Yeah. This is like the third time we found that the police were involved in some shady shit, covering up murders and kidnappings and stuff. Alright. So that seems to be done. Um. Man found dead inside the refugee camp had a distinctive tattoo. Important thread in this case. Inspector Tewksbury of the refugee camp says the men... All right, so we have to... Okay, it's a, an archives. An archives clue. 
Um, is this also back at City Hall? Um, oh no, he did say that the police will sometimes interact with people with those tattoos. So let's try the police station. So maybe there's arrest records of people with that tattoo or something. Smuggling. Um, suspects. Scaladio. Nicola Bernadotti, born 1834, is a businessman and patron, well known in Cordona, founder of the Bernadotti Company Limited, um, established 1873. Southeastern Scaladio, Bizarre Road, near the crossing with Roman Road. Mr. Bernadotti was brought in for questioning. After a tip-off from one of our anonymous sources, the source provided information that points to Mr. Bernadotti's connection to the smuggling of liquors and items of antique art between the British colonies. People alleged working in Bernadotti previously to a number of unlawful activities, including robbery. All right. Bizarre Road, near the crossing with Roman Road. That's really what we're looking for here. Bizarre Road. Oh, he said southeast. Bizarre Road crossing with Roman Road. A beard. Um. Oh, there it is. Okay, what's my closest? Oh my god, I have no nearby fast travel points. This is the closest I get. Oh, while I'm here, do I have enough? No, I have no money. This is so far. place Don't see any signs tea room hotel Should be on this road. This is a bizarre road. Oh, is this it? It seems they're not expecting guests. I won't wait for an invitation, John. Okay. I don't know if you can hear that, but the door seems to be locked. Sign entrance. Thugs here. I'm gonna have to do a combat. These workers don't look like your average Cordona folk. They're refugees from the camp. Yep. Porcelain friend for every child. This is looking. Oh, wine. Let's see. 
That's our way in, Sherry. Okay. Should I change my clothes? Um, look at back here, there's some good stuff to toys. Yep, yeah, it says find a way for the guard to let us in. Can't change clothes here, of course. Um, street brawler. There, now I look like a tough guy. Hey, yo, this is private property. You lost something. Um, I'm here to discuss business with Mr. Bernadotti. I tried the front door, but Mr. Bernadotti isn't seeing anyone. You have three seconds to walk away, or you'll never walk again. Capito. It's in Mr. Bernadotti's best interest to... One. Um, well, I can just hit him, but I feel like uh, it might be a bad idea. I am technically here by myself. Listen, the man Bernadotti sent to... So... Okay. I'm left with... Precious little alternative. Um... If I leave, maybe there's another way in. Well, this has been miserable. Sherlock, think. We know what the fellows from the gang look like. You can easily blend in. Oh, okay. Um, I'm just not quite dressed quite right. <sighs> okay. Um, they actually look like they're mostly wearing suits and bowler hats. Mostly. Do I have such a suit? No. Do I just need a bowler hat? I think I might need the suit. Let's try it again. Get out. Hmm. Well, this has been miserable. Okay, I guess I need the suit. <clears throat> okay, where can I go for that? Um, it's extremely annoyingly far away. It's not a way through as I thought it was. Miss out on my uni. Let's pick something that suits you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of these. Yeah, that looks about right. It's definitely the closest we've got. Um, bowler hat seemed to be correct. Um, uh, I mean, several of them were wearing masks, but I don't think that that's it. Oh. There we go. Gang tattoo. That one I'll actually buy. There we go. A good choice. 
a good choice oh. indeed. Just needed the tattoo. I can't Let's think. pick something that suits you. Well, let me rent it. Don't leave. Take one more look. All right. Now that that's done. All right, I went and bought the tattoo. Now you can trust me. Hey, stop. Who are you? Haven't seen you before. Didn't see you either, mate. I'm John. Just shipped in from London. Cheap bastards had me sharing a bunk with two others. Oh, that sounds like Bernadotte. Why are you here? A uh, problem at the refugee camp. I need to report to Mr. Bernadotte. The sooner the better. I oh, knew it was only a matter of time until those savages stirred up trouble. Go on, get inside. Ooh. Oh, I didn't even know there was a challenge for John here. You did it, Sherry. A full immersion into the criminal underworld. Right. So, this looks like a combat area. The silver and treasure, mate. Loads of pirate gold buried somewhere around, just waiting to be found. It's all right, there's no treasure. But maybe there is. I just need to crack the bloody riddle. Maybe. Maybe. I think that that was meant to lead us to one of the side quests, which we already did. So. Yeah, this looks like a combat area. I'm not a fan. Whoa, did I just up and leave? <laughs> trying, to find, trying to find the way through. Jerry, look! This seems familiar. Hmm. Indeed it does, John. Indeed it does. What do we have here? Artifacts? Really? <sighs> I'm just taking everything. A Dogon statue from West Africa. A century old, at least. Masks, traditional for the Chokwe people of Central Africa. VH Grindley Flow Blue Tableware. This is what lies behind the facade of Bernadotte Company Limited. An amazing piece of culture. I imagine many collectors and museums would be interested in having it. Ah, right. Let's see what's hidden there. This doesn't look anything like the envoy. This doesn't look anything like Nyla. Vogel's stolen painting. Isn't it curious how it developed into a much more interesting case? Oh, there's nothing else. Okay. I felt like that would be a more significant clue. Um, but apparently not. Hello, friend. Tough day, eh? Yeah. How are you holding up? Smuggled artifacts, internal affairs. Oh, okay, that was for the other thing. Um. Well, okay. If the damage yet hadn't stolen the canary, I'd be bathing in silver down in the mines. 
instead of this. Okay. What is with these weird, like, off-the-wall frickin' clues they're giving me? What the hell is that supposed to be significant of? Logistics. Okay. Hey, mind if I head through here? Never mind. You're guarding a door that doesn't work, just so you know. Sources. Here's the place. I suppose it's Mr. Bernard Dotty with our fine governor. 1875. It's taken a few years back. John, how many people in Cordona have a photograph with the governor, do you think? You definitely don't have one. I wasn't talking about me, John, but thanks. Excuse me. Mr. Bernard Dotty is busy right now. A lot of paperwork. Invitation to a ball. Hmm. Sir, you're obstructing the light. Could you step back? Can we confront him at the ball? I don't know who you are, but someone will be punished for letting you in. But first, let's talk. Before we talk, I'm just going to poke around a little bit. Hope you don't mind. Naturally curious person. Just like to explore. Oh, there's a fucking revolver there. This is so bizarre. Okay. Um, hi. Whenever you're ready. I'd hate to intrude. Observe. I noticed that mine's a little bit different from a lot of the other people, too. Significant. Was Sherlock did he, get, did he get his hopes up there for a little while or what? Hardened hands doesn't show him. Okay. Um, Polo Bernadotti is a cruel gang leader. Ow. <clears throat> Wasn't afraid of getting his hands dirty to show off his position of power. Hard work in his youth, Bernie Dotty grew to a hatred uh, towards the world around me. He continually expects trouble and is always ready to make some. Raised from a poor family, he had to work in the fields from a young age, it led to his suffering from pellagra, the effects of which still show on his skin. He refuses to hide his under fancy clothes that he might always remember where his motives and identity were born. Bernadotti and his men have different tattoos in the same style. The tattoos are most probably a code that represents different ranks within a tightly structured and secretive criminal organization. Okay. Harsh gang leader. So this doesn't have anything to do with being a criminal. I mean, other than this last thing. Bella Bernadotti is a harsh gang leader and calculating businessman. He beams confidence and menace. He anticipates danger by keeping his gun near him, but still holds it in the holster. Bernadotti descends from the working class. Being raised in a poor family, he had to do his work in the fields from a young age. Hard work under the sun and bad nutrition led to him suffering from pellagra. He overcame the disease. 
the effects still show on his skin. Despite being financially comfortable now, he still distances himself from the high life, keeping his clothing and appearance quite conservative. What is the difference between these two? Both are true. <laughs> There's literally no difference. Okay, then I'm just going to pick one. Niccolo Bernadotti, I presume. Doesn't tell me if the I'm name correct is or not, Holmes, so I don't know. I'm afraid I bring bad tidings. Is that so? The man you sent to the refugee camp failed in his task. He impaled himself on his own blade. Clumsy and chaotic end. For a man who just broke onto my property, you are more businessman than brute. You have my attention, Mr. Holmes. Do not waste it. Okay, um... I'm investigating a robbery. We've seen the painting. Do you know Boniface Mercuria? Are you serious? I mean, that is a good question. His involvement, I suppose, in this, the skin he has in the game as far as the painting goes, is um, he's probably responsible for the parties and maybe wanted to have leverage over the envoy. Where did the photograph come from? Who took the photograph? Was it... Someone working for Bernatoli because he wanted to get photographic leverage over the envoy? Or was it Mercurio himself? Duh. Yes, does Mercurio work for you? Mr. Bernadotti, do you know the name Boniface Mercurio? I do not. Mercurio was a local artist. Recently, a man broke into his apartment, ransacked the place, and killed him. The thief was looking for something. You are testing my patience, boy. In a moment, the connection will reveal itself. Okay. Um, didn't answer my question. But I guess if he truly doesn't know Mercurio, then he can't work for him, or doesn't work for him, at least as I suppose what we're supposed to take away from that. So, um... Mercurio was not there to obtain the blackmail material. He did have the photo. And no one seems to be aware of the photo. So Mercurio must have taken it. And at the party of his own volition. But Bernatoli finds out about it and wants it because he understands its value. Um, and so hires a guy that uses one of his thugs to try and get it back. So... I was hired, privately, to investigate the recent theft of a painting from an art gallery. My investigation led me to a man from your organization, and thus, to you, Mr. Bernadotti. That is quite Bernadotti, a stretch. Not Bernadotti. Why would I need to steal a painting when I could buy any one I wanted? Well, Interestingly one. enough, I spotted the stolen painting in your storeroom. I buy and sell a lot of things, Mr. Holmes. Unfortunately, if this is true, it is not the first time I have been sold stolen merchandise. I presume you were hired by the owner of the gallery. Tell them to contact me, and we'll sort out the situation. So, this painting is why you broke into my office. Okay. As I said, your man was found dead in the refugee camp. He was there to kidnap a woman, but the other refugees intervened to try and save her. The ensuing scuffle resulted in the man's accidental suicide. He sported the same tattoo as your men in this building. In fact, it also bears a resemblance to the one on your neck. Care to explain what business your man had with this woman? You have no idea what you are talking about. I can assure you this was no kidnapping. The refugees in the camp are on edge. What happened there is a tragic accident, one I am not responsible for. For what reason was your man there if not to abduct her? Why would I answer? You are yet to justify your presence in the slightest. So many words, so little action. When you barged into my office, Mr. Holmes, I got the impression you wanted to talk business. Now I see you had come just to talk. Tell me exactly what you want, or get out. It was necessary groundwork for what comes next. I have enough evidence to conclude that the gallery thief, the artist's killer, and the dead man in the camp are all the same person. Your time is almost up, Mr. Holmes. Before you draw your gun, there is one final detail I am yet to mention. 
The young woman your man was tasked to collect from the refugee camp had been defiled at a perverse masquerade party. That violation was captured in a photograph by Boniface Mercurio and used as a reference for his painting. The photo shows the attacker's face. Finally. That's why you're here, Mr. Holmes. You have the photograph. It is what your man was after when he broke into Mercurio's apartment, and it is what you're after too, isn't it, Mr. Bernadotti? You have the photograph with you. How much do you want for it? I am not naive enough to carry it with me, but I am yet to decide what I shall do with it. I know the man in the photo is a British envoy. What interest do you have in his downfall? I must admit, I am rather impressed by how comprehensively you have pursued this matter. And so, you deserve the honest answer. My business dealings are often arduous in their bureaucracy. A man in his position, willing to look the other way, could ease my work okay. significantly. That's what I expected. In return, I will make sure no one looks his way either. A favor for a favor. Also known as blackmail, the modus operandi of any true professional. It was not originally my idea. Mercurio set things in motion, extorting the envoy for the most trivial of ends. Okay, so Mercurio Money. was the blackmailer. In response, the envoy hired my man to retrieve the painting and the photograph, and eliminating Mercurio's the envoy leverage. Did, was aware I only of this. learned the whole story after the artist was killed in his home. And rather than extricate yourself, instead you took over Mercurio's venture. It fell into my lap. As a businessman, I simply seized the opportunity. Now, how much do you want for the image? Okay. Um, wow. Yeah, but what did you need the girl for? What, what the hell was the point of that? Why did you send your man to remove the woman from the camp? Without a photograph, her testimony was the next best thing. Securing her was in everyone's interest. Victims and witnesses all too often disappear. I thought the girl was cipher with us. I did not anticipate what would happen at the camp. That's a really stupid reason, but it's probably true. Um... Am I, if I select these, am I going to be suggesting that I trade him the photo for the artograph, uh, the artifacts or the photo for the refugees? I saw refugees from the camp at your warehouse. They work for you. I have made certain arrangements with City Hall and the police. Mm -hmm. Thanks to me. Refugees can work and be paid. It's a pathway to freedom. Oh and how much do you save by capitalizing on their cheap labor? I have heard no complaints. They seem happy just to get out of that slum. Yeah, before you put them right back into it. I could not help but appreciate the, the collection of smuggled artifacts in your storeroom. You have rather diversified your business. Oh, how high and mighty of you, Mr. Holmes. Not all smuggling is immoral. I pay generous rates to developing cultures and spread their culture to eager buyers. And furthermore, I supply many immigrants with a taste of home. A very convenient way of thinking. I have traveled wildly, Mr. Holmes. I've seen people in far-flung lands for whom my services are a lifeline. Without them, they would starve. The tax on cargo is often so absurd that it would be more profitable to simply sink your ship than dock it in the harbor. And trust me, I am speaking from experience. All right, I don't want to give him the photo, but there's only one option left, so... Why should I give you the photograph? Just name your price. What if my price were not money? You claim to have connections, Mr. Bernadotti. Perhaps you could improve conditions for the refugees. Give them a chance You've for a better life. You've already heard his version of a better <laughs> I life. I do have connections, Mr. Holmes, but help the whole camp. You are asking too much. I could, however, make arrangements for one person. The woman who was violated will have her own home outside the camp, solely for her and her child. She will no longer be a refugee, but a princess. 
That I can guarantee. Is that really possible? It will be neither fast no. nor easy, not... but I can do it. She deserves it, don't you agree? And as for her abuser, he will serve me as much as he deserves. So in your plan, everybody will be given their due. Especially you, Mr. Bernadotti. No. Seems like a fair deal. Nobody is no? given their due. I doubt anyone could offer you better. Simply give me the photograph, and the world becomes a better place. I give you my word. Mm-hmm. Totally believe you, too. <sighs> okay. Well, at least I didn't automatically give him the thing. Oh, my God. A little bit upset. Um, the envoy definitely lied to me. He definitely had more information that he didn't share. Victim of violation. Nyla was violated and very nearly kidnapped. First of all, I must make sure that she and her baby are secure. All refugees are victims of the system. The situation they are in must and can be mended. And then we're back to where we were before. Okay. And we got everything. And so the only thing to do is to either go back to the envoy or... Or what? I guess we make a decision on this, huh? Okay. Um, well, I'm not giving the photo to Bernadotti. Uh, that seems like the, the worst of all worlds here. Um, because the refugees remain... I mean, the only person it really helps is Bernadotti. The envoy gets away. There's no justice. Nayla is taken care of, I guess but only in so much as Bernadotti continues to take care of her, which could end at virtually any time at his discretion, and the refugees continue to act as his own personal serfs. Of these two choices, this is the difficult one. Um, we've got the envoy. Protect the envoy and his reputation and hope that he uses his position to improve the lives of everyone. But he faces no consequences, and let's be honest here, he didn't really seem... He, he had his justifications for it and said that he was a victim in essence himself, but we have uncovered no evidence of any psychoactive substances. <laughs> and even then, uh, I find it hard to believe that there would be any such substance that would completely mitigate his involvement in this. I think... But if then again, then again, if we blow the lid off this thing, then justice is done to the envoy. But nothing is improved for the refugees. But at the same time, if the envoy could help the refugees, he would have already. What's to say that the envoy even has the authority to do anything anyway, and ultimately they would still be living in a system where they face injustice. The envoy couldn't possibly just wave a magic wand and make everything better. You know? I think we have to go with merciless justice. I think we have to give the photo to Vogel. I think that is the just outcome here. Because we're not going to improve things by allowing people who are, who are corrupt to continue corruption. In the short term, it doesn't help the refugees. In the long term, it does. In the long term, it helps everyone to have a system that functions where the right people are in the right position. And sure, maybe the person who comes along afterwards will be equally corrupt, but if we continue to make decisions and keep forcing the trend of the universe towards justice and right, then eventually we end up in a better place for everyone. And I know that that may seem callous because it sort of disregards the situation of the people that are living there now. And that is unfortunate. 
but ultimately I believe that it is the greater good. So this is what we'll do. Yes, exactly. He can't be trusted or forgiven for what he did. And if, if Cordona truly is a place worth saving, then when this wrong is righted, they will be better off. That's what I'm going with. Let's go see the envoy. I opened the front door for you. Please, sir, do not linger. Okay, thank you. All right, let's go talk to the envoy. Um, he's at City Hall. Hey there, Norton, buddy old pal. Guess what? I've got great news for you. Have you thought it all through? Oh. Not yet. I guess I need to go talk to Vogel. Never mind. Uh, Vogel's at the art gallery, um, which was... Yeah. All right. Back problems. Mr. Holmes, you've returned. Have you uncovered anything new about the theft? I've brought news, but not all of it will please you. Fill me in, Mr. Holmes. I won't shoot the messenger. Well, I guess for starters, the artist is dead. I tracked down Boniface Mercurio. I presume he wasn't delighted about the situation. He was not having a good day on account of his murder, killed in his own flat by the same person that stole his painting. Oh, sweet Mercurio, perishing in the pursuit of his art. How apt. I will miss his exceptional sense of humor. Wow, Vogel, that's it's very unfeeling of you. I think he may be a psychopath. I located the thief, but found him rather cold. He was tight-lipped about the painting, too. Huh, he's dead. How very droll, Mr. Holmes. Or I'm presumes you were not responsible. It was an accident at the refugee camp. He impaled himself on his own knife. Life is nothing if not cruel and capricious. What about the stolen painting? Have you located it? Yeah, Bernadotte has the painting. I found the painting, but I could not retrieve it. Well then, where is it? In Bernadotte's office. Bernadotti? That shady businessman? Why would he steal it from me? I'm afraid you'll have to ask him yourself. Hmm. I take it you found something more, then. I found the source of Mercurio's artistic inspiration. A photograph. What troubled me was that the sexual act captured was non-consensual. She was violated? Dear God, how despicable. Her abuser was in fact the British envoy. Mercurio took a picture of him committing the atrocity and then used it as artistic inspiration. I had no idea a mere break-in would eventually expose such barbarity. Mr. Vogel, I want you to make everything public, including the photograph. I'm sure you have a connection at the Cordona Chronicle. Ah, uh, Mr. Holmes, loyal to your own truth till the end. Yes, I'm acquainted with the staff of the Chronicle. The story is sensational. 
and will surely draw attention to the gallery. But you must be aware that exposing the scandal will further hurt the victim. Does that not bother you? No matter what one does, the truth tends to come out, as well it should. I won't be the one to stand in its way. Though it's only your subjective truth being exposed, not that I'm judging. It's perfectly reasonable for everyone to have their own views. When you called me, you knew exactly what you would get. Oh, but I'm not like you, Mr. Holmes. I cannot be sure of anything. Regardless, I must thank you, for art's sake. Well, now that we've resolved all of our outstanding matters, I have a gift for you. I took the liberty of having it delivered to Stonewood Manor. I am told it belonged to your mother. Okay. What is it? And what exactly have you sent me? Frankly, I'm not sure how to answer that. I trust you'll know. Previously, you mentioned there may have been more to my mother's passing than consumption. It appears you were right. Oh, dear. I'd hoped to be wrong. She was unstable, mentally unwell. She required sustained specialized treatment, but her madness persisted. I knew that Violet had disappeared from the public eye, but had no idea of her suffering. I cannot imagine what you're feeling. I'm fine. Was that my hand on my chin just now, or was that supposed to be Vogel's? All right, so uh, yes, it is true, I suppose, uh, that uh, in all of this, Nayla's wishes aren't really being honored here, but that is unfortunate, but Nayla's wishes are essentially to, to bury this thing, you know, which ultimately helps, really, it really helps no one, including including her. Um, I mean, ideally, she would be on, on board with uh, with bringing him to justice, but... Um, this is definitely one of those cases where there, there are there are matters larger than than what is at hand here, and leaving somebody as dangerous as Norton in a position as influential as his is uh, it's in the best interest of all of Cordona in this case for justice to be served. So it is unfortunate that he's correct about about Nayla and, and you know having her situation uh, becoming known to the public when it's not uh, something that she wants the fact of the matter is, is that she was victimized and you know there 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 is a crime there that has been committed and as, as nice as it would be to be return her agency in this case and and all of that there's uh there's matters greater that must be addressed right uh vogel on the other hand strikes me as a psychopath that was a very strange exchange very cold <laughs> Very, very involved in his own self-interest, but in any event, if that was his hand on my chin just now, then... Thank you, Mr. Creepy. Vogel. I am curious to see what you have procured. All right. So now we'll go to Stonewood, see what this gift is, and also check into these. I, I had a couple of notes earlier about I have unlocked enough things that uh, my mother's room, or the front room and my childhood room, are restored uh, first, let's change back into something sane. And go back to Grand Saray to Stonewood Manor. It is definitely a thing. Hold on, I got a letter too. An envelope with no text and postcard inside. Postcard depicts a building and is labeled Old Church. The text on the postcard reads, There are those in need in this place. However, some of them need less than others. The postcard is branded my favorite croft, and the logo features a little farm. Okay. Go back to the Old Church later, I guess. Uh, it is a mermaid skeleton. A bizarre object, and yet oddly familiar. Belong to your mother, huh? That's unusual. Uh oh. We're having another seizure, everybody. Hold on. Did you just remember something? Yes. A room full of curiosities and artifacts. 
I think I can find it in the manor. Yeah, all right. Sherlock. That must be the last locker room. So, you continue to pursue the imaginary. I had hoped you might have got all this out of your system by now. This is Mycroft. Mycroft. What are you doing here? Get out of my house. It's my house, actually. I've come to bring you back. I have no interest in returning, let alone with you. I know you lied about Mother all these years, claiming she was merely ill, but she was unstable. She never had tuberculosis. She was not recuperating, but mentally deteriorating, and you never once thought to tell me. How dare you? I shall not indulge this petulant tantrum. You can just tire yourself out and then slink back to London with your tail between your legs. Just tell me everything! I'm an adult now. I... Show me the basic courtesy of an explanation. You know what I will find out eventually. The goal was stability, and that's what you got. The right thing for everyone was to try and move on from her passing. The consequences of one's actions determines what is right or wrong. Yes, exactly. The ends justify the means. After leaving Cordona, Sherlock, you had a normal childhood. In London, I was able to support you, guide you, shape you into a fine and productive young man. You have so much potential, so much to offer society. But that's not the end. Now I've found the truth, and it has shattered everything I knew about her, about you, and about myself. I feel unstable because of you. Your actions were not justified. Lying never is. Oh, grow up, Sherlock. It was a white lie which has as much use in the realm of the interpersonal as the international. It is time you come to accept that some things are bigger than yourself. Oh, you are full of it. You like to pretend you care about the big picture, but it's just an ego trip. You like knowing more than others. You like greasing palms and rubbing shoulders with the rich and powerful. You like having eyes and ears everywhere. The fact it helps the nation is incidental. Because all you care about is yourself. It's true. I have agents everywhere, including Cordona. If you weren't so damn stubborn, you'd realize that means I'm only here for you. Well, all right. So, finally meet Mycroft. Um, I gotta say, that entire exchange was a little bit silly, but okay. Oh, we have... Uh, <laughs> we have the elephant from... <laughs> oh, that's most excellent. I am very pleased at that. Um, and there's still nothing... Here. Okay. So, a uh, room full of curiosity. Sounds like we have access to the last room in the house, then. It's cool just looking around here and seeing how things have changed because of our progress. Let's go. Open that last room. Uh, apparently he's talking, but I can't hear him. Home sweet home, Sherry. Um, yeah, indeed. Things have changed quite a bit, although a lot of this doesn't really seem to have much to do with me. And I can't actually get into the, several of these rooms. Another one. There must be something important oh, behind there, it. I can feel it. Was there two more? This? The local justice system in all its glory. Okay. Must be for another one of the quests that we completed. Oh, there's this back here. Although this, this shouldn't be a room. Oh, I can... No, I, I don't see... I don't see a room behind that door. Um... It's nice having everything back up the way it was, though. Another one. There must be something. Okay, so there are two. Maybe see. there's a third. Hmm. Okay. Um. I guess let's visit the rooms we have opened then. I can sense an incoming memory, Sherry. Do you? No. Um, so we fixed the balloon. Oh, there's the pistol. I will need a proper outfit to match this. 
Oh, I need to wear the pirate outfit. I do remember seeing the hat, but I don't own it. Um, oh, maybe I need to pin this. Maybe that's why I couldn't get it open. Um, okay, so it's that room. Holy moly. Um, pin this. I was so frustrated to find only one bed in this room. Mycroft initially refused to bring another for you, but after a week-long dispute, he gave in. What a stubborn man. How well do you think he would sleep without a bed? Should I clash with Mycroft about the furniture? I needed a place to sleep, but there was only one in our... Okay. All right. Is that it? Yes, apparently so. Let's go back out to the hall and grab that memory. We'll need to buy the pirate outfit, apparently. We used to take a shortcut down the banisters. Much to everyone's annoyance. Oh yeah, what fun. They had to fix these handrails several times. I wouldn't try it now, Sherry. Tempting though it is. Hmm. Then we go to here and here and pin that, and we're looking for this door here, it seems. Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Okay. Or... Oh, here we go. I remember returning home with a pair of perfect sticks. We wanted to turn them into training swords. Oh, that's right. We stood there, frozen, staring at something huge in the main hall. It was a giant aquarium with a living mermaid in it. No. Impossible. It must no. have been something else. Oh, of course. That mortifying hoax presently taking up space in our front yard. Well, fine. Your memory's better than mine. But I'm sure we started examining it immediately. And someone else was around, too. It was my mother. She asked what I thought of the artifact. You were really concentrating and holding something in your hand. Magnifying glass. I inspected it with a magnifying glass and was able to confirm it was made of two different skeletons. The mermaid was a fake. And so it was time to smash the thing. Your mother took a hammer and... <laughs> Slow down, John. That's not how it happened. I remember other people joined us. The workers took the artifact and placed it into the Cabinet of Curiosities. It became part of Mother's collection of fakes. She always said that the truth lies in the details. This mermaid helped me to learn that. All right, let's check this place out. Sounds cool. Ah, yes. My mother's studio. She was an authenticator, and this was her cabinet of curiosities. I never saw the point. What does it matter if some <laughs> artifact is real or not? It still exists. Um... That's an interesting point of view, John. One of the most ridiculous fakes I ever saw. Its owner insisted it was a polar bear. He thought the white paint on the brown fur wasn't noticeable. I remember this cosy blanket. It was perfect for... Wigwam! Oh, that was a joy to build them. Imagining ourselves as wayfarers on the other side of the world. And we have unicorn horns, is that what that's meant to be? Diving suit of some kind. Oh, 
Oh, I remember these. We used them to spar together until Mycroft found out and forbade us from using real weapons. That is an excellent idea. So many calling cards. Mycroft liked to keep useful people at hand. This is my deepest gratitude for your recent help with that personal matter. I sort of think what may have happened were not for your keen and sharp mind, keep eye, keen eye and sharp mind. Mr. Sherrod, uh, passion causing, okay, uh, Judge McDougall. Officer Officer Placido. Luciano J. Placido. Reliable and driven. I recognize my cross handwriting. Well, he's retired now, so... Oh. Cordona... Carefully opened. Dated 24th of April, 1869. Writes to inform you that the trial... Dr. Otto Richter and the death of Miss Violet Holmes has been assigned to his uh, Judge McDougall, okay. You're here by informed that the prosecution has called you as a primary witness in the trial of Dr. Richter. You must present yourself at the criminal court of Cordona on the dates listed. Okay, so he... Wow, okay, that's, that's news. This drawer it was always closed. Only Mycroft knew how to open it. I remember we tried to break it open and spy on him, but alas, had no success. Maybe today's the day. Oh, Sherry. Um, perhaps. We'll see if we can find the key, I suppose. Um, yeah, I think this is the first we've heard of there being a wrongful death. Um, laid at the feet of Dr. Richter, who was treating Violet Holmes. Bingley, West Yorkshire. 1852. Bingley, West Yorkshire. This photo caused a lot of fuss. My mother spent some time to prove it was a fake. Look, it's Roger. This jolly old man's well preserved. Even looks refreshed. I doubt he drew much interest at the auction. That's for the best. I mean, I'd be upset if he fell into the wrong hands. That's a good point. It's pretty amazing that there's not more stuff from here that was taken. A positively Lovecraftian. As a matter of fact, several of these artifacts have a distinctly Lovecraftian feel to them. This one here has a little bit of a H.R. Geiger influence as well. There must be more to, to purchase to fill this out, huh? The so-called mummy of a Persian princess. The defrauders did good work, but missed one small detail. It's the mummy of a man. And this one was brought from a German museum. They claimed it belonged to Vikings. Nonsense, of course. Vikings never had horns on their helmets. Well, you know... Ms. Holmes is a patient of considerable interest in an ideal test subject to explore some of my theories. I will attempt to repeatedly immerse her in the traumatic situation that precipitated her mental illness. It is my belief that by relieving the moment may that moment may give her mind a chance to embrace what happened, accept it, and effectively cure itself. I'm confident in my hypothesis. I merely need to prove it. In addition, it's fortuitous to be around the broader Holmes family. Perhaps I will be able to also examine the heredity of psychological traits, be they competencies or disorders. It is already apparent that all family members share an uncommonly high intelligence. It appears that the mother's condition has begun to affect the mind of the youngest boy, Sherlock. While I cannot conduct proper medical examination due to the protectiveness of the elder son, it seems that the boy suffers ongoing hallucinations in the form of an imaginary friend, John. All right, then.
A torn diploma found in the cabinet of curiosities. Someone deliberately ripped it in several pieces, resemble, reassembled, and translated. The diploma reads on behalf of the board of the University of Geneva, Switzerland, the rectors of the university, noting that Mr. Otto Richter has undergone the tests required by the laws. Okay, so that's his Clearly, it diploma. was deliberately torn. I wonder why someone would do that. I also wonder how somebody got it to do that. The Tulpa studies the in Tulpa Tibetan mentalism. The Tulpa studies in Tibetan mentalism. An impressive number of bookmarks. Someone was rather obsessed with this subject. It's a book with strange metaphysical symbols in it. My dear brother, I hear you recently arrived in Cordona. Have you come to see me? I do miss our evening conversations, even if we never agreed in our opinions, Cordona. Is home to a stunning new art gallery, which I visit every Thursday. Meet me there. Oh, and do not seek Klaus and that a name I left that name behind. Hmm. So Otto was not Otto, but was Klaus, but it has a diploma with that name on it. The full plate armor of Sir Robert Swanford. I was told my father won it in a wager. Armor is armor, but look at his sword. Oh, how badly I wanted to wield the blade. Maybe you take it instead of your pistol. I'm starting to remember something. Hmm. Okay, just a moment. Let me do this first. Mother said this was among the hunting trophies of a Scottish Viscount. So we... We tried to persuade everyone that his forest was inhabited by these beasts. It would have been thrilling if it were actually true. Uh, this helmet does resemble an actual helmet. I don't know if it's a Viking or a German helmet, but it, you know, he said both, so. Um, other than the horns. I used this ladder to look at the top shelf, right? On the day of Mother's breakdown upstairs. Right you are, Sherry. We heard a noise. I can't recall of exactly what. And we didn't have a great view from behind the statue. The books and papers from the table somehow ended up on the floor. Now it's coming to the surface. I feel it. Um. And he said he was on the ladder. I don't know. Okay, I only have two choices. And only one of them really resembles what he just mentioned. So, but that's not Sherlock, that's John. Okay. They were hiding behind the thing, yes. There. And then over here we've got... Um, no, I don't think that happened. It was probably this. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. All right. If it's a problem with one of them, it, it's going to be this one. Come on, Sherry. Let's go outside. Wait. Did you hear that? Come here, Sherry. You call this progress? Charlatan. Amateur. I'm not letting you anywhere near my mother again. So there was a quarrel between them. Well, yeah. He testified against him at his trial. I heard a noise in the hall. Let's check it out. More guests? Please, no. Oh, God. Sherry, look! We've got a parcel here. 
I'm waiting for you at Kurt Mencio's mansion on Turquoise Lane across from the Cordona Abbey, Northern Grand Surrey. Come at once, if inconvenient, come anyway. Always your friend, VV. P.S. I sent you the appropriate outfit for this place to avoid any complications. I hope it fits. An invitation that comes with a mask. We can't miss this, Sherry. Vogel creeps me the fuck out. There's something wrong with Vogel. Ugh. A sacrificial lamb. Um, let's pin this and see if we can find the key. Ah, the memory comes back. We snuck about watching him. He closed the drawer and went to the hall. We were like two shadows crawling behind him. He opened the door to the postman, and they exchanged documents. If it was a real postman, of course. The painting on the wall was slightly a tilt. He stopped and straightened it. Then he threw some logs into the fire and sat in his armchair to read. It's as boring now as it was then. I'm sorry, Sherry, but I think that's it. Wait, John, we never use the fireplace in the mornings. What if... A bit of juniper in the fireplace created a soothing atmosphere. It's the little things, isn't it? I think this is what we're looking for. Okay. Let's go open up the thing. There's going to be something cool inside. We made it. So what's there? Bottle of wine. Royal Lochnar oh, it's whiskey. Single malt whiskey. My cross favourite. Gifted by Queen Victoria herself. Neat. Otto oh, Richter. Richter. Otto Richter. This one is rather thick. Mycroft can be truly dogged in his research. A uh, 45-year-old born to a respected family in Bern, Switzerland, unmarried, no heir, medical practitioner, graduated from the University of Geneva. Switzerland graduation was postponed a year due to a minor scandal in one of his placements. Parents had a collar in 1863. Only remaining family is a half-brother, Klaus, age 35. Okay, so he is using his brother's name. Present whereabouts of Klaus Richter, unknown, last seen on Cordona. Oh. Or perhaps Otto is Otto and his brother was here and that was the communication he got. Dossiers on the most influential people on Cordona. Mycroft always had a habit of building files on everyone he met. Okay. That's apparently all there is. Key. This is just everything we just learned. Okay, um, and then we got this. So now um, we know that there was a court case. I don't see an archive clue anywhere, um, but uh, we know that there was a court case, so we could maybe look that up. Second bed, right in the hand. Uh, yeah, present from the queen. Okay, mind palace, mother's love. Um, Mycroft did not like the methods of Dr. Otto Richter and did not trust him. And the 
apparently that's all there is to say. Okay, I, uh, that ding means I have a meeting coming up, so um, it was fun. We'll continue on in the next part. I think next time we uh, we might take out a couple more of these side cases here. Um, I need to earn money. Oh, I have some money. So I'm going to spend some money on some more furniture. So I have several places now. And then I'm going to make some money by doing some side quests. So take care. Have a nice day. We'll see you when we do that. Thanks. Bye.